Thank you for the very kind invitation to present on soft tissue surgery for facial presentation of neurofibromatosis. Facial soft tissue involvement in a neurofibromatosis relates to specific nerves, especially the branches of the facial nerve that control the motor function of the muscles and the supra and infraorbital nerves that relate to the feeling of the face. In the beginning, these functions of nerves is still preserved, but with time and progression of the disease, this function decreases and can even be completely lost. The speed in which the disease progresses has a wide variation. There are specific indications to perform soft tissue surgery. These can be functional complaints, such as obstruction of vision by the eyelids, drooling, exposure of mucosa, and often relating with bleeding, or obstruction of the external ear canal. It can also be pain, or it can be a disfigurement in the cases where nerve function is already lost. Here you see the two main nerves that are involved in neurofibromatosis. One nerve controls the feeling of the facial skin, that's the trigeminal nerve depicted in the middle picture, and the other facial nerve controls movement of the face. If you look at the picture of the patient on the left, you see in the red arrows indicated the swelling of the supraorbital nerve in which neurofibromatosis has affected this sensory nerve. While on the lateral sides of the upper eyelids, you see neurofibromatosis relating to branches of the facial nerve. The eyelids are a specific area of concern in neurofibromatosis. If you see the severe presentation on the left-hand side, we have to state to the parents that these late referrals will hamper the outcome of surgery for these eyelids. The chances of saving the muscle function that opens and closes the eyelids are less. Also, restoring of the contour of the eyelid is difficult. So it helps to do surgery a bit earlier in these cases but of course recurrence will take place and you don't want to do surgery too often. In some cases it is very impressive the amount of progression of the disease that occurs. In this child there is no function of the eyes, so it's a relative indication. And this indication was mainly present because of bleeding of the exposed mucosa. So a lot of these neuropharmamatosis was reduced, but we cannot do a complete excision. So it's always important to manage the expectation of the patient and the parents it will never look normal or function normal. And of course, there will be a recurrence in time. The outer corner of the eye, it can drop uh, because of loosening of the soft tissues from the bony structures and excess of skin. Correction of this area has low risks and as does a very good outcome in general and can be performed relatively early to get the best surgical outcome and it can be repeated if necessary with time. In this patient, the eye has been removed years before. For some reason, there was a retraction of the skin which causes loosening of the implant that she wears. This type of reconstruction is fairly straightforward and we can recreate eyelids 
and add extra space within the orbit to allow wearing the prosthesis again. This is of course of a huge benefit to the patient. Neurofibromatosis that presents itself in the temporal region is more difficult to treat. It's the area in between the ear and the eye and it's exactly the place where the frontal branch is situated. This is the nerve that elevates the eyebrows and if cut you will have a droop of the eyebrow. In some patients this function of the nerve is already lost due to invasion of the neurofibromatosis into this nerve. In that case surgery of the temporal region to reduce the amount of swelling is safe. In contrast to the other areas of the face, the nose seems to be not so much exposed to deformity as the other regions. The nasal shape is often preserved with little distortion because of neurofibromatosis. And even with years that pass, we see little progression of the nasal deformity. This is why we are quite reluctant to perform early surgery for the nose as the benefit is not very big. And surgery to the nose before the age of 18 might even hamper normal outgrowth of the nose. If there is a neurofibromatosis presentation within the cheek, this is usually because of an involvement of the facial nerve and mainly of the branches that innervate the mouth. In this child, he still had the ability to elevate the corner of his mouth. So when taking out as much as we can of the neurofibromatosis from his cheek, we take care to preserve as much as we can of the branches of the facial nerve that are still intact. For this, we use a special nerve guidance tool during surgery to identify each of these nerve branches. Besides big neurofibromatosis lesions, we often encounter tiny facial skin lesions, which can be multiple. These can be taken out via a skin excision but one has to be aware that every excision will result in a scar. Usually these scars are of good quality, but you have to inform the patient about this. If it is a more extensive involvement of the soft tissues, you will see a sagging of the ear. And with the downward displacement of the ear, the outer ear canal can be obstructing, obstructed and this might cause functional issues for the patient. Pulling the ear upwards is quite difficult. All the tissues involved are of a poor quality. And if you try to put in a suture, you will probably tear the tissues. So correction of a sagging ear, cheek and neck involves very extensive surgery with often disappointing results and recurrence that occur within months. Involvement of the chin usually indicates that the mental nerve is involved, which is a sensory nerve and that supplies the lower lip and chin from sensation. So excision within this area might result in numbness of the lower lip and chin and might not outweigh the benefits of surgery. This means there are a lot of dilemmas before going to surgery. That is particularly the unpredictable progression of the disease. So we should not undertake surgery at the very first sign of the disease. One should wait to see what the natural cause is, as this is very individually based. 
Deciding on the best timing of surgery is thus difficult and one has to outweigh the benefit and the downside and make this decision together with the parents and the patients. Every surgery will have resulting scars and again a scar might be quite acceptable or might be very wide and obvious. This is also individually based and needs to be addressed before going into surgery. At every time the surgery is considered, one should make the parents and the patient aware that we are not curing the disease. Even if we try to be as radical as we can, a recurrence will probably take place in time. Specific risks that are related to this surgery is severe blood loss and loss of nerve function. So before going into surgical treatment for facial presentation of neurofibromatosis, an individual surgical plan needs to be developed and discussed with the patient and parents. What are the upsides and what are the downsides? And does it really outweigh each other? Always stress that the surgery will not be a cure and a recurrence will occur with time. So you don't want to end up doing surgery every year because it might get com more complex and more risky every time. So try to make a plan over five to 10 years time and discuss with your patient when he wants to have this treatment and what he can expect as an outcome of this. Thank you for your kind attention.